Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And as you can see right here, you can see here Apple just opened up in this after extra after, after hours or pre-market hours. Everyone look at it. Take a look to see if there's anything here on oh, Microsoft. Yeah, it's opened up a little bit higher here. See here. Um, same thing here with NVIDIA. Google just a little bit higher. And the other one's just a little bit higher, not a whole lot higher, although we've really seen uh, the indices continue to go and move higher. Uh, we can go and take a look here with uh, NASDAQ. And Irina says, good morning. Good morning, Irina. Um, we'll take a quick look at the indices. And we are still continuing, but we just we just ticked off 800 right here as the uh, this past hour was just closing. Look at that, um, and some decent volume at this time of the uh, day. Look here, uh, and if you look here on the um, let's go to a two-hour chart. We have continued to move higher. And I remember. You know, suggestion on Friday, I was going to leave this thing alone, and uh, let it because I, I knew we were coming to some resistance. But I even took a short and ended up having to cover on that. And thankfully, I did because we had just continued to move higher. Did go and take a a short in the Asian session, made a couple of nickels, and fortunately, I was able to cover, and I made sure I didn't get back in it. And there were some interesting levels here that I could have, and we've continued to move higher. Uh, we did make it here. We've just got above the 61% right here at uh, 11,768. We're still continuing to press higher. There is a little bit of a zone that I did put in here. You can see here at 11,827. So I'm thinking they're going to go in and make a move towards there. There's also 161% of this prior range. I'll show you that. That high to this low, which is just a little bit lower um, than this other one, almost set up like a double bottom here. If you scroll up, you can see that comes in at 11,851. But to me, it looks like, you can see we're already above the 61% here. It looks like we're going for this zone here. The top of the zone here. It's a mid little zone that we're already in anyway. 11,827, and you can see how we kind of formed just a little bit of a ridge here. We moved higher, nothing significant, but on the way back down, we did, touch it and come off of it. You can see here, kind of highlight this a little bit. See how we'd come here and then we rallied off of that, but then we came back and tested it, took it out, took it out again and held, dropped back, and then on the rally back, you see we're running out of gas, 11,827. My thinking is, if you look here, and you see on the break higher, you see that? They came back to 11,827. And then on the way down here, the bottom of the zone, which is 11,739, which I thought they're going to run into trouble on Friday if they did get there, which they did. And then they did back down. And then in the Asian session, we immediately sold off. And then we bounced right back up real quickly. But you can see here we came off of that area here. Rallied up. Well, I had a decent little rally up here. Came back down. We jumped back up here. We're still within this range. And then... On the way back, we came up here and tagged it up here before it fell apart. And then you can see same thing here. So this is a key area, this 11,739 to 11,827. And I think that looks like they're going to go to that 11,827 here. You can see right there. That's where I think they're going to, they're going to probably go to. We shall see. Uh, we can take a look at the SAPs, which I haven't done looked at that too much. 
This one's actually been to stronger than the than the NQ, although the NQ's had a, in some ways a bigger move. But the uh, the the um, the push, like like when we took that dip on Friday afternoon, the S and P's held at the same day VWAP. Now the Nasdaq's VWAP, same day VWAP was lower, but the S and P made it to its same day VWAP and bounced right off that, literally right off of it. Uh, if you look here. Looks like we almost would have a big, bigger way to go. Well, we are at the 127% extension right now. We're just kind of hanging around there. But right now, the NASDAQ appears to have a little bit more power behind it. And it looks like we could make it up to that 11,827. What if we do run out of gas here? We're not that far away from it. So it would have, been, it would have come in close. i still be a little bit off it, but it's been, you know, we, and the S&P's got above its 61%. But the Nasdaq had not gotten above its 61% on Friday. But we did obviously uh, move higher and get above it. And we are above it right now. So maybe we'll make that move to 11,827 before we see a better, more of a pullback at this point. So I just want to give an idea where we are. Right now, we got same day VWAP. Really, I mean, we're way below. And uh, with about, looks like about 11,756, so about 40 handles away. We can also take a look and see what the dollar's doing. I opened up a separate window. Here we go. Because uh, we do have a bank holiday today. Um, so that may slow down things a bit. We shall see. Uh, I just happen to have Apple up here, but pretty good move here in Apple right now. Although I'm not on that screen. Let's see here. I've got resistance today in Apple at 120. Let me see. Here we go. Daily resistance at 121 and two hour resistance at 118.26. And we're already above 118.26 to start with. So if we do make next resistance line is going to come in right there. 120.14, so about a dollar away from that. That being said, let's go and take a look at the, the um, your dollar quickly. Push a little bit higher, but not we're kind of quiet, a little bit dead. The market, well, it's just hanging around near its lows, open to go lower. Let me take a quick look at the Aussie dollar. We did close right there at that 72.42. Just want to keep an eye on these um, these equities in the pre-market. Um, let's go and take a look at what's on the economic docket.
We did have German wholesale prices. Don't have anything on that. Not sure what's going on there. Um, and then we have uh, Mexican industrial output, and that's actually going to be it. Well, once again, we have a bank holiday today. That's probably why. But I'm not sure why this didn't come up. For tomorrow, we do have German CPI, UK employment data, German zoo, core CPI in the States. That's all, once again, all tomorrow. Then on Wednesday, Spanish CPI, uh, Eurozone industrial production, PPI in the States. And let's get to the news. So the Australian New Zealand dollars edged lower following the Wan policy move. The Australian New Zealand dollars were lower on Monday reversing some of their previous week gains as China moved to facilitate shorts on the Wan and as negotiations on the U.S. stimulus package ran into resistance. The offshore one dropped after the People's Bank of China said it would lower the reserve requirement ratio for financial institutions when conducting some foreign exchange trading. Uh, our interpretation is that removing the reserve requirement is intended to encourage firms to hedge in order to manage currency risk, said Kun Go, head of Asian Research of Australia and New Zealand Banking Corp. It also enhances the foreign exchange market structure by making it easier for foreign investors to hedge their onshore portfolio investments. And you can see right here, uh, NASDAQ still moving higher. But remember that we've got that 11.827. You want to keep an eye on that. Um, and actually, I didn't even put the news and everything here on this page. Uh, I will keep an eye on that. Really did it so I can have my... Um, full screen on two different screens of my cash equities. Uh, I want to see how those, sometimes I'll see them move to a level and then run out of gas and then I have the, you know, doing the FX and don't end up seeing that. And that's why I had this moved it and just, I only need one page here. So do it on top of this, but boy, we are, it looks like we're making the move for that 11.827. Uh, be interesting. We should run into some resistance. We may overshoot it a little bit, but anyway, um, the move reversed part of the risk-sensitive Aussie's gains from last week forged on the back of optimism of the further fiscal measures in the U.S. and higher commodity prices. And that's an odd thing, too, because we have not got, you know, you would have thought the way we're reacting is they said that, you know, like as if they were saying it's imminent, and it's not. You see what I'm saying? But we're still proving higher right now, and there's different reasons. We've talked about that because um, – one thing that's been gripping, if you want to call it gripping, may not be like, for lack of a better word, but had gained a lot of traction on Wall Street or Wall Street firms is that with the widening um, uh, polls for Biden looking like it could be like what they're calling a blue wave, then that takes away a considerable chance of the disputed election. Not that, you know, Trump won't try and say something, but I'm saying if we, if the wider it is, and the more that the, there's a bigger chasm, uh, <clears throat> then it's going to be difficult. He may still do it, but at that point, the thought would be, well, if the leads are so wide and, and Biden wins across many, many, many states running the electoral uh, college, uh, then the chances of that really being of any real substance other than him, you know, saying that really drops lower. And that's why a lot of this is higher. I mean, you can't say it's all on the stimulus because we don't have the stimulus yet. But the 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 leads uh, over the weekend, they're still widening out. I mean, some states are closer, but we're widening out in a lot of the uh, battleground states. And if that happens, then pretty hard to go and dispute it. You can dispute it, but there just won't be very much merit, you know. Uh, it's like playing a, a basketball game and you lose by, you know, if you lost by uh, two points or three points, maybe you can dispute it. Maybe you can dispute it, but I'm just saying, he said, this was a bad call. That's a bad call. 
they say that. But I'm just saying, when you lose by, let's say, 25 or 20, hard to say, oh, if it wouldn't have been for this call or that call, I'd have been right there. Well, not when you lose by more than 20. You see what I'm saying? So essentially, that's where uh, the street is basically getting a lot of positive resolve from that thinking that, hey, it's getting wider and wider, and we're just not going to run into the, the, the chance of a, a truly contested election uh, one that has actual merits. He may want to contest it, but if you get blown out of the water, it's, it's just not going to have very much merit. Um, anyway, and the other things are leading towards that also. They're saying a lot of, they're saying a lot of uh, um, those that run for office on the Republican side are supposedly you know, running for cover. Look, I'm saying, I'm not talking politics. I'm just telling you the way that this is market related. That, because if you say, wow, I thought it was supposed to be up on the stimulus. If there's no stimulus, why is it up? That's the reason. So I'm not here to play politics. I'm just saying is that's the way, that's how the street's reading it. It's been reading it like that since last week. Towards the end of last week, starting on Thursday, they started going that direction. And it was, you know, spoken about quite a bit. Um, that there will be an, an eventual stimulus is not really in question, but it's a size and timing. That's another thing also that they've, they've thought about that is because if there is a blue wave, <clears throat> then um, the Democrats are going to have a bigger stimulus. So the market's like, hey, we're banking on it. We're not going to wait until then. We're banking on it now. So that's another thing that's really pushing things on because now you're thinking about what the Republicans were originally offering was like 1.2 billion. And then it went a little bit higher. And then right now they're trying to get 1.8. They don't even have the votes for 1.8. But if the Democrats get in there with the blue wave, now you're talking 2.3 trillion and boom, you know, now you got the market going gangbusters and you're seeing that right now. Um, there will be an eventual stimulus. Uh, it's not really in question, but it's the size and the timing on it. And the market's getting whipsawed around with the headlines around the White House variable position. New Zealand uh, dollar likewise retreated um, uh, one tenth to 66.63, down from Friday 66.71. Uh, short of the Australian, uh, and that was 60, yeah, 66.63. The short end of the Australian government bond features were slightly low with the three year bond contract down one tick at 99.81. So, enough of this one. And let's move into the dollar. So, the dollar ticks up on stalled stimulus talks. So once again, you'd be like, I don't understand this. How can this be moving higher and the, and the stimulus talk stall? I thought this was the, was the reason it was moving higher on Friday. But like I said, it was the other reason also. And not only are you, you've broken a lot of technicals, um, is it, it's, and now it's really feeding on itself. And you can see right here, we're almost at that 827. So, um, US dollar edged up to 9310, bouncing back from Friday's low of 92.99. The index saw its biggest loss in six weeks on Friday. Trump offered 1.8 trillion coronavirus package and talks with Speaker Nancy Pelosi. We've been closer to Nancy Pelosi's 2.2 trillion. So, yeah, and there's no reason for her to back down now. But Republicans offered Drew criticism from several Senate Republicans, many of whom are uneasy about the nation's growing debt. It's funny that now they're worried about the, about the debt. Um, I'm not going to go there because it would sound politics because someone had asked me um, about this about a month ago. Um, seems to be a pretty good sizable trader. And he was asking about the Fed. And he goes, what do you think is going to happen then? And I said, oh, don't worry. If Biden wins, they'll find religion. Um, you know, all of a sudden, oh, we're worried about the, the deficit. We're about, they weren't worried about it before. Still, with the November 3rd election only weeks away, investors bet the Democrat Joe Biden is more likely to win the U.S. presidency and offer a larger economic package. And then once again, because of the widening of the polls, they see that as, I won't say a manifestation, but it, it looks like it's going to come that way. And another thing you're pointing out to is all of our, um, the, our the early voting. I think they have, they've already had like 8 million in early voting. So it looks like it's, you've got a lot of um, people that, um, I want to say an enthused electorate, but that, you know, are really, you know, stepping in to take action. And that's not pointing in the way of, of a Trump victory, at least from the outset, from what they're looking at. Um, so anyway, our interpretation is removing the reserve requirements and to encourage firms to hedge. We did cut go with that. Just more talk about the one. So with that, we'll move into the dollar. We'll move into the analysis.
So we're going to move into that. You can see we're pretty close now. Um, going in move this out of the way. We'll go back. Remember, I told you we're right there. There's that 11,827. You can see this is we we broke through here and we and we rallied up to 12,000, basically like 12,030, I guess, around here. Just can see, but but here we fall back and where we find support 11,827. We rally up here. We fly down here. And we find support the lower portion of this um, zone at 11,739, give or take. We rally back up, we fall back down, we take that out. We rally back up and this, you can't see it as well, but right there, it runs out of gas 11,827. We fall back down here, we rally back up and where's it go? To 11,827 before we finally see this move. So that makes sense where they'd want to go to. Maybe we overshoot a little bit, probably looking for the market to run out of gas in that area, want to see the volume, see the volume right here? Pretty big jump in volume right there. So we see if, and then we'll see how we react at that level. Then we can take a look at the spoos. You can see the spoos right here. They've got some resistance. They've actually haven't even, they haven't even taken out their highs now. I mean, they've already, they've had highs, but I'm just saying is, see how the NASDAQ, they're pushing for that, le that level, but you see how the spoos, they, they've taken out the highs earlier and they haven't been able to get Beyond that, well, this is all NASDAQ right here. And we're closing in on that 11,827. So let's go on in. I'm trying to figure out where to put this. I'd like to keep that open. I guess we can move it. Here. And through this here. And you can see it added on the Euro pound. We talked about this Friday. So I got rid of the, um, the Euro yen. So we've got the Euro pound here. And bear with me. Make sure we're on the right page. We are. And NASDAQ just blew right through. We're 18, 18, 11, 832. Now 11, 831. Um, bear with me. Good morning, Amanda. Oh, speaking of which, gold is, well, gold's higher. It's not a whole lot higher. Um, we just had a decent little jump in volume, too. We just looked like we knocked off about 800 right here. So we have, want to see what the reaction is. Um, so with that, let's go move into the euro. And the reason I would set up this way, like I said, is um, that way I can keep it, I can keep, I can keep track. Take a look like the Apple right now, they're 120 30. Uh, Microsoft is 2 1688. This is all in the pre market hours. Uh, Nvidia is at 555. Uh, Amazon is pressing resistance at 3296. Um, so they're all pressing resistance are close right there. So we'll see how much further the NASDAQ. We're already at 1838 right now. So we'll see if we we're not start to run out of gas. We're seeing a little bit of good volume. We saw the 800 and now we've gotten 500, but it's still kind of on its highs. But I would expect it to kind of take a pause around here unless it pushes up to that 161% uh, that I told you about, which is, I think it's 10871. Um, let me open this up and see. 11,851, 11,851. Oh, that's 161% of that, that level too. And we've also got a resistance level at 11,860. Wow, we are still plowing ahead, holy smokes. Um, enough of that though, let's go on move into the analysis. Daily. Here we go. Let's move on to the arrow. So the euro posted a solid close to the prior week. Resistance will be 1847 with a weekly close above that level to spark sustained buying. Support will be 1752. So giving it some room. And to me, 
1847. If we can get a weekly close above that, we can really kick off some real buying. In the meantime, and this would go from bullish. Okay, let's go move into the cable. Wow, man, this, this NASDAQ is just going to the freaking moon. It's already at 18, 11, 848, and we've got the 161% at 11, 851, and we've got a level resistance there at 11, 860. Holy smokes, this thing is like bananas. Um... There we go with the cable. And I was kicking myself for starting it on Friday because I was even saying in the webinar, essentially suggesting I was just going to stand by. Really, the only thing you want to do is buy. But I remember mentioning, oh, the, the equities are key levels. But everything had been pointing higher. There was no reason. And don't forget, on a Friday, a lot of people have to cover. So that was a dumb move on my part. Anyway, that being said, cable closed above the weekly level of 3025, opening the move to 3106. Immediate resistance will be 3072 with support at 2970. This NASDAQ is on fire in fuego. Holy smokes, 11.854. I thought we'd kind of run out of gas right now, uh, but the, we're coming into pretty key level. 11.851 is 161% and 11.860 is a level. Let's keep an eye on that. Holy smokes. Um, let's go move into the Aussie dollar. Seeing some decent buying here. We had almost 800, then we dipped a little bit, then we had 800 again. We went to about 500, then we went to about 900, then we went, and then we're having 500, 600, 600. So we're seeing some good volume in here. Uh, the Aussie capped the week with a strong rally into resistance at 7242. Resistance start the week will be 7282 with support at 7189. Definitely giving it some move. Man, this thing is going bananas this last day. And that's the thing I was kicking myself for on Friday because not only had I talked about that, but um, there was nothing to say why you'd sell it. Because you, once again, I would say you want to put the percentages in your side. So if you can do that, you want to be going with the trend. Um, hard to try and buy on a move like this. I thought we'd probably start to run out of gas somewhere. But other than the quick Asian short, I had enough sense not to stick my head in the grinder on that one. And I had a pretty decent week, too. Ended up giving some of it back on Friday. Um, bear with me. Come to the Kiwi. Eleven eight sixty five. Holy smokes. Because we're at a key level. I mean, we're at the 161%. You'd expect it to kind of start to run out of gas here. And that's confluence with the level. Uh, Kiwi set a strong reversal on Friday. Clearing out bears. Resistance to start the week will be 67.19. We supported 66.12. Looks like we may have taken a little bit of a pause here, but... Nothing that you want to say, any kind of a definitive pullback. I want to keep an eye on that. Also, I'm taking a look. Uh, NAS, uh, Apple is at 120, 60, and 121 is 100, uh, is uh, 50%. And Microsoft's at 217 and a half. Uh, 219 is a 61%. So I want to keep an eye on that. 
Then uh, let's take a look at the double can. So the dollar cat unraveled into the end of the week into support of 31.12. You can see that right there. And I already had that level there. So I didn't drop the level, just it ran out of gas at the level. I already had that there. Um, support for the week will be 30.71 with resistance at 31.91. Here we go. I don't know why I had that as bullish. That's crazy. Went to be bearish. Let's go into the uh, dollar peso. Dang, eleven eight seventy two. This thing's still going. Holy smokes! You want to stand in way in that train? Holy smokes! Hang on. Donald Peso erosion uh, continued to close out the week. Some semblance of support will be 2107, followed by 2093 resistance will be 2124. So 2107, followed by 2124 for resistance. What the heck? Why would I have this bullish? That's pretty stupid. Um, let's go to the dollar again. See, the, the NASDAQ is going hard, but I'm looking at the cash equities. And like I said, Apple 121 is at 50%. Microsoft 219. That's what helps to follow these cash equities because you know where you're, you know, like, like it'd be looking at and saying, this doesn't make any sense. It's still going hard. Yes, it does. If you're looking at the cash equities in a pre market, um, dollar yen. Dolly Yen saw a reversal of the week's earlier gains. Immediate support will be 542, followed by 508, and resistance will be 601. So 542, 601, and move into the Dollars finished the week on the lows, taking out the pivotal support of 93.24. Support for the week will be 92.68, followed by 92.17. Resistance will be 93.60. I don't trust this thing for nothing. Told you about the submarines horn honking about three weeks ago. And a lot of people were saying, oh, it's going to rally now. We're going to we're go on and blah, blah, blah. And no, it's. Submarine horn honking. Um, 93.60. And let's go move into the cross rates. Trying to run a little bit out of gas right now in the NASDAQ futures, not very much, but we're still. Amazon's still holding at 32.96. It's not adding any further. Facebook's a little bit higher. We're a bit stretched, and uh, Google's at the 38%. So, right about here, it may look to take a pause. Um, and on the Kiwi in. QEN took out the highs for the prior week on Friday. Resistance to start the week will be 70.81 with support at 69.94. Now 
like I said, you know, um, we didn't even get the stimulus package and look how we're taking off to the moon. So that's what I'm saying. A lot of this has to do with this whole thing. Well, the thing is that they're, they're going to get this blue wave. Um, the Democrats are going to run the table and then that that suggests a much larger stimulus. That's why we're running with it, even though the stimulus talks, nothing's happened. Um, now, our new instrument, the Euro Pound. We dump the... Um, the euro yen. And this thing was sweet. Look at that. I wish I'd been trading the euro pound. That went right to the tick. That was bananas, man. Look at that. Right there. Nicked it and then had a pretty good little fall. We kind of worked a little bit lower now in the um, NASDAQ features. They're 1861, so they've come off about not a whole lot, about 17 uh, ticks. But we are forming on the 30 minute. We haven't closed yet. Could be forming a Greystone Doji. Um, So the euro pound, the euro pound finished the week pressing the 90.56. Support for the week will be 90.22, which is pretty decent little fall if it gets there, with resistance at 91.15. Gave it a little bit of room here. Um, and you can see there's some, some additional support here. I guess for today, because it's quiet with the bank holiday, even though it's only here in the States, we'll go with the 90.43. Since we're just day trading, and look at this high, we're going to go with that. It's going. To, it's kind of a quiet day with the U.S. Bank being closed. Ninety, we'll go ninety ninety. And with that, we'll move into the euro odd. Euro odd close a week, negating the week's early rebound move. You can see that. And then we just gave it all back, or most of it. Support for the week will be at 63.17. You can see that level already there. With resistance at 64.10. And this is not bullish. Uh, you have to say this is in a range at this point. We're still dropped a little bit further here. The NASDAQ features. And it looks like the equities are back a little down a little bit here too. We've actually already faded about 25 handles. Uh, let's go to the Euro Kiwi. So the Euro Kiwi finished the week, uh, giving up its prior strong gain. Support to start the week will be seventy six eighty one with resistance to 78.07. And that's not bearish anymore, would it be? Well, we're kind of in a range now. We've fallen back into the range, so this would be a range also. And let's move into the Aussian. Thought about dropping this one because this one doesn't really move that. I mean, it moves some, but 
Uh, Aussie in close a week at key resistance of 76.47. You can see that right there. Uh, immediate resistance to start the week will be 76.75. Support will be 75.72. But like I said, with the Chinese yuan story, that's what's kind of dropped it off a little bit. Uh, support 75.72. And resistance seventy six forty seven. Well, seventy five seventy two and seventy six forty seven. On to the guppy. And the guppy closed a week on the highs. Immediate resistance will be 3809. You can see that right there. With potential move to 3990, support for the week will be 3675. So we've dropped it off quite a bit in case we do see a pairback. So we'll still stay with that 3675. And the immediate resistance is 3809. And let's close it out with the sterling nod. Okay, sterling nod finished the week, giving back the bulk of its gain. Support for the week will be 79.50 with resistance at 81.38. A little bit more room. And that'll wrap it up. And we're going to get our uh, bias chart posted in the room and we'll see you in the chat room. And thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar.